we start with a prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you. Thank you for today and for the children in the Hosannas. They're such a great blessing. It just, just touches us in wonderful ways. Thank you for this season, this Palm Sunday. It is, it is also called Passion Sunday, so there's a darkness about it, but there's a joy as well. Thank you for this church and for this class. And thank you for 2 Corinthians, which is challenges us so much. Lord, we have prayers for those in this world that are undernourished and underfed and do not have the resources that we do, the resources that we take so very gladly. And we pray for those who are in regions of war and conflict. There seem to always to be wars and rumors of wars. Bless us today as we continue on in 2 Corinthians so that we may learn a little more of what it's like to serve in times of stress. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 I noticed over here, uh, just want to point it out to you, uh, this book right here, it's Strong's uh, exhaustive concordance <laughs> of the New Testament. Not exhaustive. only that, expanded exhaustive. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that I do and that you like so much, you know, about going to the words and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, let me talk about this book. Okay. And it's not the only one, but there are many like it. Uh, little, uh, uh -huh. This is not the only concordance. This was 19th century work. This one was, okay. Yeah, it's 19th century work, so it's not copyrighted. This costs about 12 bucks. Ew! Oh, we could all get one. Yeah. 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 You know, something like this, I, I, I think it does. Uh, I don't know about this particular one because this is an expanded version. Uh, anyway. Is it based on a particular translation? Yes, King James. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's based on the King James Version. And it's, um, let me tell you what it does. This is the expanded, I had not seen this expanded version before. A concordance takes all the words and, and lists them, uh, but it takes the, the King James word. Okay. okay. And it lists them, and you can find all the uses of it. Now, this is, this is important because understand that dictionaries are defined. When you go to the dictionary, whatever dictionary you go to, the words are defined according to how they're used. I, Ed, I don't know if you know Carol's on. Can she hear us? Yeah. Can you hear us, Carol? <laughs> well, yes, I, I can see you. But I can't see exactly what you're holding up. Holding up, um, this is the, uh, uh, the Strong's Exhaustive uh, Concordance, uh, so Expanded you, Concordance. So if you hold it over your, oh, hold it up and she'll be able to see it from there. <laughs> there. Do you see it? Yes. Yeah, uh, so that's basically when we go to, when I talk about words, I'm talking about words and they're defined by how they're used. Now, this is, uh, uh, since it's come from, this stuff is all done originally in English. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can see these, uh, these dark mark, markings on the side there to, so that you can, uh, you can find the words uh, in, the words as they're there, and it gives you the variations of the words, okay? And it gives you the um, uh, the number, et cetera. Uh, and there is a, uh, a uh, there's a number that's assigned to it, and, but they also sends you to the, to the Greek. Oh, it does? Yes. So it has the Greek in there. Yes. 
Oh. And to the Hebrew. Really? Mm. How yes. nice. So I think this should be about 12 bucks, but I'm not sure. You're welcome to look at this. I, I bring this up because it was, it's been sitting over there for a while. Uh, and it's part of the library. It probably should be over there. But we'll I there. noticed the the on the binding the R for re research probably or something. I that it was a library book. Oh yeah, yeah. it's in here. Yeah, it's amazing. Here. Okay. So you can come here and use it. Uh, so I just wanted to give you that as a tool. Uh, I I had I have this stuff in the original language, and I have all that on on my computer. So I don't used to be that when I. When you study something like this, you have to start piling dictionaries. <laughs> right. We yeah, know about that. Yeah, yeah, right. Of course, I do. So, so, do so do does this number on <clears throat> this number on the far right of the column? I can't. There is a refer to the. Uh, I mean, let me just see. I can look for it. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, there is a. Uh, This is this is copyrighted, so this is going to be more uh, more expensive. Um, there is a number. I think this would be the resource for the number. Um, the reference number in the teletype to look for is in the Greek dictionary. Otherwise, yeah, that's the number that you would look for in the Greek and or Hebrew okay. dictionary. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yeah, very nice. So, okay. Uh, you will recall when we started this part with, with this, this bad letter uh, <laughs> back in chapter 10. And I told, mentioned that the, 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 the end, this, starting in chapter 10 to the end of 2 Corinthians, uh, constitutes a, uh, a discreet writing. And uh, I'm working under the assumption, as many do, that this is the bad letter that Paul refers to in chapters one and two. And I mentioned that it has a chiastic structure. Chiasm is something that goes A, B, C, C, B, A. Okay, wow. that's a chiasm. Okay, the chiasm in this place was, it was an introduction in verses 10, 1 through 8. Uh, the, um, and that's in that introduction, Paul introduces the, the conflict and declares war. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in 11, 1 through 15, um, it's kind of a prologue. And here he talks about the, the adversaries, uh, who they are. He, he brings up a... a it talks about bride uh, being a um, the um, trying to present them as a bride to Christ, uh, and he also talks about super apostles. And he spends this is where he spends a lot of time talking about getting paid. And this is when the, in the class and when we talked about sophistry and sophists. That what they did is that they were real strong and in, 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 in oratory, etc. And they also got paid, and he was he was criticized for being paid. He insisted he wouldn't do it. He's not going to get paid. He refused to do that. Um, and then uh, for the last two classes, we had the core of this 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 second letter or this bad letter, which is his boasts when he defends himself to uh, against his uh, adversaries. Now we're moving into the, kind of an epilogue. And this is this is parallel to the prologue where we talked about pride and super apostles and getting paid because those are included in one form or another in this last uh, part of it, which is not very long. Uh, I'm just gonna read 11. Uh, 12 verses 11 through 18, but there's a lot of meat here that we'll, we'll talk about. Let me read it to you. Uh, starting with verse 11, chapter 12, verse 11. I've been a fool. You forced me to it. Indeed, you should have been the ones commanding me, for I am not 
all, at all inferior to these super apostles, even though I'm nothing. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, signs and wonders and mighty works. How have you been worse off than the other churches, except that I myself did not burden you? Forgive me this wrong. Mm -hmm. Here I am, ready to come to you this third time, and I will not be a burden, because I do not want what is yours, uh, what is yours, but you. For children ought not to lay up for their parents, but parents for their children. I will most gladly be spent, spend and be spent for you. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? Let it be assumed that I did not burden you. Nevertheless, you say, since I was crafty, I took you by deceit. Did I take advantage of you through any of those whom I sent to you? I urged Titus to go and sent the brother with him. Titus did not take advantage of you, did he? Did we not conduct ourselves with the same spirit? Did we not take the same steps? Okay. Um, you can hear, see the super apostles here. It's interesting that in, in, in verse one, uh, it's a basic contradiction in terms. It shows the contradiction here. I've been a fool. You forced me to it. Indeed, uh, you should have been, been the ones commending me. For I am not at all inferior to these super apostles, even though I am not. Uh, I am nothing. I am not inferior to the super these poobahs or whatever they are, even though I'm nothing. So you got a basic contradiction here uh, uh, and, and this this goes back to this notion that in weakness i'm strong my, right. my weakness gives me strength Paradox. Yeah, that's right it's it's really powerful here um, the uh um, and once again we see the super apostles from chapter 10 in the first part of chapter 10 and then he goes on to say in verse 12, the signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, signs and wonders and mighty works. Okay, let's talk about the signs and wonders and mighty works. This is, I think there's a lot to be said about this. Let me, let me read to you a whole bunch of scripture passages about signs and wonders. Now, signs and wonders, let me read you from Deuteronomy 26, 8. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. This notion of power and signs and wonders fills the Old Testament. It's everywhere. Um, and so this is what God does. He does signs and wonders. And this is why you believe in God, because God's got efficacy. God makes it happen. And, um, and, and this is true in the New Testament as well. But this is, uh, the, the whole of the Old Testament is, is, in, is imbued, is infused with this notion that the reason you worship God is because he works. Uh, the other gods don't. They are gods who are no gods. That's what, what the prophets call them, Isaiah and Jeremiah. These, these are gods who are no gods. They are, they're, people worship their gods all over, but they're no gods. But God brings, brought them out of of Egypt, out of bondage, um, with signs and wonders. What are the signs? Well, you had the frogs and, the, and uh, all the stuff going on. Crossing the Red Sea, that's a big, that's a that's huge that's wonder. A really big. <laughs> yes. So uh, this, this is, this is uh, I could go on and read through hundreds, hundreds of passages, but I just wanted to limit to this one. 
Signs and wonders, of, of course, because otherwise God is invisible. I mean, yes. sort of by, by nature. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. By his nature yeah. or her nature. Mm -hmm. um, and so if there were no signs or wonders, I mean, that would have to be how God would yeah. uh, communicate God to us mm -hmm. humans, right? What else is he going to do? Well, he's going to send prophets. And he's going to send his son, himself mm -hmm. in yeah. human form, mm -hmm. which is the biggest sign and the biggest wonder. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but I'm just trying to think about that. So yeah. many years of signs and wonders, you know. Jesus is the, is the big sign. Yeah. Jesus is the, the, the comparable to the Exodus in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, man. Um, but you know, I don't know you, you may not re let me let me re refresh your mind about the Exodus. Uh, they got they got led through the Red Sea, the, the Sea of Reeds, right? They got, and the and, and the uh, let me find this story. Um, the people were over on the other side of the Sea of Reeds, and uh, they had this um, great. Uh, um, dance uh, on the other side of the Sea of Reeds. Uh, and let me read it to you here. Um, uh, and Moses um, uh, got through on the other side. There's this great song in Exodus 15, but it's summarized here with this. Uh, then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing, and Miriam, Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, horse and rider he has thrown into a sea. Say, okay? Uh, and so they, um, uh, uh, that's, they, they just they celebrated this great sign that God had done. Listen, tell me, let me tell you what happens next. This is Exodus 15, 22. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days into the wilderness and found no water, and then they came to Marah. They could not drink the water because it was bitter. That is why it is called Marah. And the people complained against Moses. Uh, uh, <laughs> what, what shall we drink? And he cried out to them, and the Lord showed them a piece of wood and threw it. Uh, uh, and the water became sweet. Uh, and then it goes on uh, about the people grumbling. Uh, they, 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 in verse chapter 16, the whole congregation of Israelites set forth from Elim, and uh, Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. Sinai. And on the 15th day, they, uh, the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of uh, the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They grumbled, they complained, they bitched them long the whole time through because, because they were uncomfortable, because the signs weren't there. Right. Um, See? And no water would be yeah. pretty tough. Be yeah. And so all the way through the Exodus, they, they, they reached some kind of problem where, they were, where, where things weren't right and they gripe and mumble and groan. Uh, the um, uh, the, the grumbling in the wilderness is is more plentiful than the, the, the great signs, but uh, and sometimes it came down to judgment. So uh, that's um, we need the people of Israel need some kind of palpable reason to believe. It's not enough that he did it back then once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got to do it now. Okay, man. Uh, let's read from from the New Testament. I read from Hebrews two verse three. It that is salvation was declared at first through the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard Him. Uh, God added His testimony by His testimony by signs and wonders and various miracles and by signs. And by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. That's Hebrews. There's a lot of signs and wonders and acts. 
X1 and T. Uh, and, and this is, they're, they're all assembled, and this is Jesus talking to them. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit is upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. They're going to receive power. Here's, and then, of course, we had uh, Pentecost. This powerful, powerful event that probably involved all kinds of ecstatic experiences, be certain speaking in tongues. Here's what, and right after Pentecost, Peter interpreted, uh, interpreted. He starts by saying to the folks around, these guys aren't drunk, that they didn't even look like that. Right, even but they're, they're not drunk, okay? Um, it's so, <laughs> so isn't, that, isn't that where he says it's 9 a.m. for crying out Yeah, loud? yeah. This is, this is, this is, this is, <laughs> you really like forget the drunk. And so they, uh, uh, so, and then he goes on and gives this speech about what's going on there. And this is what he says, uh, this is part of the speech to Acts 2.22. You are Israelites. You that are Israelites. And so he's speaking to different crowds. And here he's talking about to the Jews. You that are Israelites. Listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power and wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. So once again, we have a, a power and wonders and signs being done here that Paul, that Peter lifts up. You saw it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Acts 5. Um, this is um, uh, Peter speaking in, in the temple. Mm -hmm. That's beginning with uh, verse 12. Now many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles. And they... Uh, uh, they were all together in Solomon's portico. Yet more than ever, believers were added to this. this is, incidentally, follows the story about uh, uh, Ananias, Ananias and Sapphira. Remember, they were the ones struck dead. Oh, the right. next, the okay. next, the next verses. Uh, you know, the signs and wonders done among the people were there, and they were together in, in Solomon's porticos. And yet. Uh, more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, great numbers of both men and women, so that they carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall on them as he came by. A great number of people would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing a sick and those to more tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. Signs and wonders, folks. Wow. Acts 8. Now, now you recall that uh, Philip was, uh, was the uh, evangelist, he was called. He was one of the, one of the he was later called, uh, and he, he was called Philip the evangelist. And, uh, uh, and he went up to um, uh, Samaria. This is when they were first expanding. Acts 8, 9. And now a certain man named Simon had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria saying, he was someone great. All of them from the least to the greatest listened to him eagerly saying, this man is the power of God that is called great. And they listened eagerly to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, who was proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. After being baptized, he stayed constantly with Philip and was amazed when he saw the signs and great miracles that took place. Mm -hmm. Now, when the apostles of Jerusalem heard 
that Samaria had accepted the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them. Now that's interesting. You know, you got these, these country folk out there. They, they're doing, we don't know what they're doing out there, but we got to go out and check it out. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so they sent Peter and John uh, to them. There's a lot of wonders out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun, is there? <laughs> you got to be careful of those wonders. <laughs> uh, and, and two went, uh, and Peter and John went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, when Simon saw that the spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered money, saying, give me also this power so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, may your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain God's gift for money. You have no part, part or share in this for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and chains of wickedness. And Simon answered, pray, pray for me to the Lord that nothing that you have said may happen to me. This is where the word simony comes from. Simony means to purchase an office. Oh, Okay. Yeah, it means to purchase an office uh, in the, originally in the church, but it also it means it's a general generic term for mm. so it's simony. But understand what's going on here. Simon's a magician, right? He's in Samaria, and he's doing all kinds of magical, magical things. Uh, and, and what's magical things? Magical things are. Uh, a, a manipulation of the forces of this, of the forces of nature, right? Uh, by intention, by word, or by incantation, or some kind of spell, or act, or whatever. And, and he had a lot of followers, and they thought that this guy was a, spoke for the, the, the what was it, the. Uh, this man is the power of God, the God that is called great, the greatest God, okay? So, um, so it's possible for people to do magic. Things that are wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. things that will make other people think they're really, that, that this is a man of God and a man of power. I was thinking about that, you know, the Christmas story and how, is it the shepherds or the kings? The what? <laughs> saw, you know, they were told to look, go to Bethlehem and isn't there going to be a sign? The be a star. star where the star. baby was. The star. It was the star. star. And yeah. right below it, yeah. that's the, mm -hmm, where the baby was born. That's right. That's, right. That, so that's, that's a sign. Be, that's a sign for sure. Yeah. Don't you know? Yeah. That's right. So, so I mean, people can... But the problem is people can do signs. Right, or you could just thing. know what the what the uh, astronomy is for that yeah. area and then fix it so it looks like you you could I mean the, the, the false prophets could do that. You could that's right. Yeah. And, and you could do that all the time. This was this was part of what it meant to be a religious functionary in that time. Oh how tough that must have been. Well what they would do they would do uh, the the, the 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 auspices uh, they these were folks in in Rome and elsewhere who would watch the birds and if the birds do something they would interpret it in a certain wow. way or they would uh, they would do things like cut open an animal and look at its its liver or something and and, and interpret how the liver the entrails of of a goat or something and interpret it in such a way, or maybe look at tea leaves in the bottom of a cup. Mm -hmm. right. So, right. Uh, and this notion of interpreting a sign right. is powerful stuff. And in fact, uh, studies have shown people have ecstatic experiences of various kinds. Uh, studies have shown that after that, when they've had that, people tend to be highly suggestive. Mm -hmm. So what's in, 
So you, if somebody has this experience, should have it, and somebody tells them this is X, they may attribute that ecstatic experience to X. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough that one has an ecstatic experience somewhere. You got to have somebody like Peter telling them what it is. Mm -hmm. Because ecstatic experiences are so common, they can mean anything. Right. And people are ready to believe it because it's powerful. It's really a powerful event. So let me go on and finish reading it to talk about this some more. Is that so? Uh, he said Peter and John, right? Mm -hmm. And Peter and John laid hands on folks. And uh, this, this was a, an act of power. Um, this was the, uh, a mini Pentecost, so to speak. Uh, and, and Simon wanted to purchase it. Mm -hmm. But it's these acts of power that that make people want to follow and believe. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and it, it is used all the time. Uh, it's used to affect, I think, for instance, modern uh, rock concerts where they have fire and all lights and all this stuff go on. I think this is added to the effect to give it substance and to give it authority mm -hmm. uh, and and to touch people excitement yeah it's interesting here it says in the story of simon uh, uh they, they they received peter prayed on them and they received the holy spirit for as yet the spirit had not come upon them they had only been baptized in the name of the lord jesus so this is this is where the charismatic the pentecostals talk about the full gospel mm. so. Um, that this this is it's on the basis of a passage like this that they say you're really a Christian only when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and then they take the step that says okay we well, you know that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit when you speak in tongues now that's not justified say so there are lots of gifts of the Holy Spirit that don't have anything to do with ecstatic behavior mm -hmm. say and so uh, the the but what's interesting about that to me is what they're saying is we won't believe it unless we have a sign, and this a is sign. a sign that we want from yes. you. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Right. And, and, and and I don't know if they still have these. I used to watch them on television now and then. These gospel preachers who do healings. They had one in Detroit. I can't remember the guy's name. He was doing something, and he had all these crutches and, and wheelchairs along the line on the outside of his church, signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. um, we need them. We need them. Okay. Um, then Peter was, this is later in Acts 9, Peter was going out and about. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so we read in Acts 9, 36. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. Uh, Peter put all of, came and put all of them outside, and he knelt and put, uh, people. Peter, Peter, they called Peter and said, "You got to do something about this." Um, and Peter put all of them outside, and he, then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, "Tabitha, get up." And she opened her eyes, uh, and seeing Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known through Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Right? Romans 5. So that sign was from Peter, and that was a real one. Yep, he resuscitated. So that gets kind of tricky. Yep. <laughs> Romans 15. Uh, for I will not, this is Paul speaking, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and as far as the Lycrium, I have fully proclaimed the good news of Christ. This is a, towards the end of Romans here. So Paul did not do miraculous healings. His 
Given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by, by the one Spirit, to another uh, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. These are all activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as Christ, uh, as the spirit chooses. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Acts 20. Paul uh, has... This is at the end of the second uh, missionary journey. Uh, and he's, uh, he was apparently down in Akai or wanted to sail back. And instead, uh, there was a, uh, a conspiracy of the Jews. So he decided that he was going to come back through um, um, Troas. He's going to go back up through Thessalonica and cross there and come back down. Um, so, um, and uh, gotta find it here. Sorry. Um, Okay, so he's on his way back, and he was in Troas here. Um, this is Acts 20, verse 7. On the first day of the week, when we met to break bread, Paul was holding a discussion with them. Since he continued, intended to leave the next day, he continued speaking until midnight. Sometimes things get a little long when you get a preacher. <laughs> um, there were many lamps in the room upstairs where we were meeting. It's the first person here, so apparently Luke was with them. A young man, Eutychus, who was sitting in the window, began to sink off uh, into a deep sleep while Paul talked still longer. There's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, overcome by sleep, he fell to the ground three floors below and was picked up dead. But Paul went down and bending over him, took him in his arms and said, do not be alarmed for his life is in him. And then Paul went upstairs and after he had broken bread and eaten, he continued to converse with them until dawn and then he left. Meanwhile, they had taken the boy away alive and were not a little comforted. Now, now most people think that he was just concussed or something, just knocked out or something, but whatever. Uh, some, I think, um, I think the Greek says in that, he was a still sleeper, whatever. It assumes that he had died. So Paul does, uh, it, there's a reflection of him doing something like that in, uh, yes. uh, in Acts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and finally, 2 Thessalonians. Uh, this is chapter two. This is about the, the this coming of the, uh, the, uh, the end of the age here. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter two, verse nine. The coming of the lawless one is apparent in the working of Satan's who uses all power, signs, and lying wonders. Ooh, that's the scary one. Say, well, is so, it? so is Simon, the magician. Well, yeah, right. So, uh, what the, I mean, what does that say then? To be well, aware? To be yeah, aware of the... So. Okay, and part of the problem we have today is where are all these signs and wonders? Right. Now there, there are types of Christianity who claim them, 
We Presbyterians don't much. Well, I, I sometimes feel like we, right, but I think that there, maybe it's just my Presbyterianism. I mean, I think that we have um, appreciation for, for example, our communion service, our amazing, that is a sign. yeah, our amazing music, which is transformative sometimes. Um, so, and maybe our language is a little different. I mean, do we say wonders? I mean, I, I'm just power and signs power and, and wonders. Signs and wonders. We, we, I think, I think we see them in just different ways, just diff, just in different ways, the way God works. That, yes, man. Let's let's talk about this for a second. For and for us, frozen chosen, and for other mainline kinds of <laughs> uh, denominations or whatever, the, we have to we have to explain why these miracles don't happen now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a tough one. You have to make up reasons uh, that well the age of uh, and that was a certain age when these kinds of things happened. Um, when in truth, it may be uh, the enlightenment itself, which rendered all these kinds of things superstitions. I was witness to a healing. Yes. Vietnam veteran I met in the infusion center. He told me right, bit, right off the bat that he had had, had 12 or 15 bullet shrapnel wounds in his back. Yes. Mm. And he had esophageal cancer, and that's why he was there. And he said, I can handle the pain from the fragments in my spine. I can't handle the cancer. And he had terrific PTSD, flashbacks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I, I ministered to him several times when he and his wife and his service dog would come in. He lives in Oscoda, off the beaten path a little bit from when I go up. So I've stopped to see him several times, made phone calls on him. And uh, about two years ago, when I called and said, hey, how are you doing? He said, Chappy, I don't understand this. I stepped out of my shower and all of a sudden the cancer was gone. Mm. I went down to Ann Arbor, imaging showed no cancer. Yeah. I went up to my VA doctor in Alpena, no cancer. I yeah. said, to what do you attribute to this? He said, well, I have a lot of people praying for me. I attribute it to divine intervention. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. And we, I think we have, to, we have to accept that as true. I really do. Um, it doesn't happen very often, does it? No, but it, we also think it happened to our mother who had aspergillosis and which is a lung fungus. And, and the doctors said it was her second round of this and she already had a quarter of a, you know, half a lung removed. Second time she went in, it was so invasive that they they said there's really nothing that you just pretty old. And they said, you know, another another surgery is gonna just be too hard on her body. And you know, she, they, they they couldn't get rid of it. And she also we went back home to Grand Haven yeah. and went away. She finally and she had she said God, I attribute it to the power of prayer. So yes. many people are praying for me. So, so yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and that is a faith builder that won't quit. Right. Yeah. That won't quit. She didn't say it to many people either, because that's not very Presbyterian. <laughs> <laughs> See, isn't that interesting? That's it's too bad. Yeah. Um, because we're afraid, I think, of being disappointed. Right. It doesn't happen. Well, of course, because it's not doesn't follow reason. It doesn't follow so. I think, can I have yeah, sure. yeah, one more? Yes, of um, course. So I um, was in a Bible study with um, people that I think you all know. Um, but in any case, um, one of the people, Olivier um, Joliet, who was in our group, got, yeah. um, it was at the time when he was diagnosed with this um, essentially bone problem. He needed to have, it was like leukemia. Yeah. And 
Um, so he, you know, they brought this to our Bible study and it happened that we were, whatever we were reading, it was about prayer. And um, so we talked as a group about how we were fearful about asking God for, you know, we were, you know, you ask God for strength, you ask God for many things, but how, but how scary it is to say, dear God, please heal this person it, physically. Yeah, right. Because that's like putting it on the line, right? And, and and asking for something. So we talked about that a lot and 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 it's sort of oh ye of little faith, you know, um that yeah. so anyway, that for the prayers, my husband actually to to my surprise and happiness prayed. We we pray that you'll that you'll heal Olivier. Right. Okay. So then, you know, quite a number of months later, it was Olivier. It was Olivier. Okay. okay. And and many, you know, many months later, he he's healed. Right. And it's very tempting in those cases for people to say to then sort of forget this is this was our prayer and this is a this was a prayer, and I, I it's not because of us that he was healed. Right. But we can be so thankful right in those cases when you pray or other people pray and this happens you just i think it's so i just so when you said that it wasn't because of us do you think it, i don't think we had nothing to do with oh, it i prayer. think prayers had a lot to do with it yeah but it's not because of us yeah yeah, right? yeah. i mean humans it's didn't so cause the no, healing no humans but we did we did have that prayer. advocate him for it. <laughs> yeah, we had the prayer. I it's a so I think that's a tricky part. Right? Yeah. 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 The prayer does come in a different way at a different time. Say yeah. that again. Prayer comes in a different way at a different time. Yeah. When I was eight years old, mom died at Christmas time. Yeah. A week later, two weeks later, dad got his diagnosis, and I started praying, Dad, God, please make my daddy well. Daddy died within two a uh, year and a half, mm. and it wasn't until about twenty five years later, when I went through clinical pastoral education and my supervisor did a psychodrama on me, and I claimed my pastoral identity and authority finally, and I was working in among the patients, and I wasn't afraid of that because before I was a afraid person. Oh, right, of course. And and I thought Jesus. This is now how you are answering that childhood prayer by making me strong enough per Paul right. in the broken places right. that I could be with people who are broken. Right. So yeah. that is profound to know how Jesus did that right. so much later. So much, yes. And through me, what that meant for all the hospital people's that patients right. that are saying. All the people that, and your mom and dad, were kind of a source as well. Yeah. Through you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. So that's why I, the right. really? prayer isn't an answered right away in the way we want it. Right. Right. Yeah, and it yeah. comes up in a surprising, right. grace filled way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about signs and wonders, Virginia, that accompany <laughs> the gospel. Don't backtrack. I'm sorry. I just got out of the meeting. <laughs> we're happy of you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. signs and wonders, not yeah. flashy, no. not immediate, not dramatic. Right. But later on, oh Jesus! Right. right. Yes. Yes. That's so. That's a great. I'm going to remember that for hour because yeah. signs and wonders and mighty works is what it says here. And mighty works and that fear of asking, which is yeah. Right. I, I is it fair to ask God for right. this particular? Yeah. Right. And you know, it's in the in the part in the our service where it's time for the silent prayer. I always just barely get started and then it's over. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm always I'm thinking, oh gosh, do I really get to ask for you know, forgiveness? I, you know, I, I just, you know, it's just the same old continuing problem, you know, issue like what? Pray without what? ceasing. Yeah, I love that too. Mm -hmm. Unceasing. Unceasing prayers, mm -hmm. and then, um, yeah, and then just thankfulness. I think. Thankfulness, I, yeah. I mean, I feel like, yeah. You know, I, so whenever I'm ten, so for me, if I'm tempted to doubt that that that's an answered prayer, mm -hmm. you know, um, then I always think, nope, 
No, nope, I'm just going to be thankful. I'm not going to oh, ask. I like that. Why did that happen? How I'm going to be thankful because it, it it was my prayer, and this is and it happened, and it happened, and I'm so thankful, thankful. to God. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. What we've seen here in Acts and in various passages is that these kinds of things are what drew people to the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's, the, 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 I think the, the, the activity of the Holy Spirit in the early church apparently was palpable mm -hmm. and, and, and very, oh, man. It, 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 it was there for all to observe. Mm -hmm. And this drew people to the church. Now, this is not necessarily true today at least it's not the big the things that draws everybody in that we are we are not lacking in, this, in acts of country. mighty works not, not in this country but there are places in the world oh uh, yes right yes and in fact the, the the christianity is spreading most rapidly in africa mm -hmm. uh, and in south america yeah. and much of this uh, uh this spread of Christianity in Africa and South America, and even in Asia, is uh, Pentecostal. Yeah. Right. So, you know, maybe uh, uh, I can't but help believe I mean, that Pentecostalism was generated, born in this era in 1904 in Azusa Street in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, there's a specific revival there when people start speaking in tongues, and this was a part in the latter half of the uh, of the 19th century. Uh, the Methodists, out of the Methodist Wesleyan tradition, there developed a very strong uh, holiness movement, mm -hmm. uh, and out of this holy move, holiness movement uh, uh, came th this Pentecostal tradition involved the Pentecostal whole in this tradition is what it's called. And this is a place where you get palpable, visual, uh, measurable, uh, observable. Uh, you can hear it. Uh, works of power, apparent power, and, and, and uh, mighty uh, uh, signs and wonders. Um, that, that, that that's a still a powerful part of Christianity, but maybe we have washed it out. Well, and then you can always go back to Jesus, wasn't it? Jesus who said, Blessed is he who doesn't see and yet believes, or something. Oh, yeah. Right. So, you know, blessed are those who don't. This is for, right. for Thomas. Yeah. Blessed are those who not yet can believe. Right. See, that's, and it may be that faith is all the more great for believing without these right. mighty acts and right. uh, uh, signs and wonders and mighty mm -hmm. acts, mighty mm -hmm. words. I want to say that I seem to sense the activity of the Holy Spirit fairly strongly here at First Pres. Yeah. When I see the children going up and young families, and I don't know overall what the uh, rate is of new membership, but there's something that I feel. Mm -hmm. that's the work of the spirit and that's mm -hmm. a it's that's a sign to me that yes. encourages me yes mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes the signs are what we want but nonetheless yeah. signs are yeah. Yeah, the signs are there and sometimes so. we can't see them right. Right. and sometimes we can't see them can't see that's them right. Right. and yeah. don't perceive them right and works are happening we don't know about yeah so. but could you want so um and you were sort of taking us through that his or the signs as you were talking about what Paul was saying. Um, yeah, in 12, right? Yes. And the signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, signs and wonders and mighty works. Who 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 was who's he talking about? He is talking about the signs of a true apostle. These are the signs that drew people there. He did them, and his and other people people who had these apostolic gifts. Mm -hmm. 
this is this is something was going on in the early church that's probably much more subdued here in First Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. uh, but and, and the question is, uh, uh, what happened? Why why isn't this everywhere now? And it, and I'm thinking it may be uh, maybe the Holy Spirit is bursting out in the whole world now in a way that that we Presbyterians or want to overlook, I don't know. But this was a powerful part of the, uh, of the early church and its draw. People were healed, there were regular healings. Uh, there were all kinds of acts of power. That's a mark mainly of the apostolic age, isn't it? So, it's, it's, you know, and we call this the apostolic age because that's one of the markers of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we explain why it's not happening now by saying that's a marker of the apostolic age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't I don't and that's nothing more than an explanation. Incidentally, I would say that the that the Roman Catholic Church understood this better than we do. So that when they celebrate communion, they mm -hmm. claim and believe that the bread is actually turned into. Uh, the body and blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, we, and there's all kinds of stuff about that. But nonetheless, this becomes for a, a specific group an act of power, a uh, sign, and a wonder. Mm -hmm. And so, what's so amazing about my the friendships of lots of different Catholic folks is that they, they often just like go sometimes every day, yeah. and certainly every week. For, for communion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to experience that power. Because they need that. that they, yeah. They, I mean, who doesn't? They, that sign. They that, wonder. Yeah, they wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about Catholics is they do not serve the wine. That's reserved to the right. priest. Right. Right. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Unless you spill it. Yeah. Ah, the true. real blood of Christ. The real blood of Christ. And only the priest, no, the priest can be trusted with that. But yet. You can take while well, they put the they put the bread on the, the tongue, and, yeah. it. and now I think they may be dipping yeah. the pat. Well, I, oh, that may be here, but in in Europe, yeah, I watch every Sunday afternoon Catholic Protestant, and they don't serve the cup at all. Yeah. And I suppose they put the wafer on the tip of the tongue, or put it in the hand. So for me, um, Catherine and I have talked about this a lot about, um, uh, but for me, sometimes. Sometimes we have sort of a um, implied and maybe explicit criticism of churches that don't allow everyone to partake of communion, right? Because Presbyterians, it's a table. This is not our table. It's yeah. the Lord's table. You go. It didn't always used to be. Right. That's, but, that's fairly new. But I know. Yeah, I know. But today we we sort of voice this criticism. But when you really um, believe, as if 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 you're Catholic and you really believe. This, the Holy Spirit is working through this, and this is the body and blood of Christ. Then, why? Then, of course, you're not going to just let someone casually come up because right. this is a right. Yeah. And I sort of understand why they don't in, offer it up to everyone yeah. because this is something much bigger than it is for us, as witnessed by the, the children's first communion. Right, but that's usually about first grade. Yeah, so that's right. quite young. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but see, that that becomes a momentous oh, event yes. in the lives of a Catholic child, child <laughs> in a way that being confirmed does not. Right. You know, I think too that they just um, often think that what's going on here, like in our church, is that we haven't taken communion. You know, and our souls are in danger because we haven't taken communion so many years in Protestant churches, especially ours. And they believe that that, that is a prerequisite to getting to heaven, getting to God. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, that's different. Restrictive, but yeah. yeah. Okay, folks, well, let's stop here. We'll pick up in verse 13. We're going to two verses today.